Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem four from the hacker rank women's code sprint 2019 contest, strangely compatible. The problem states there are n students in hacker rank university An array students represents the profile of the students. Students I is a string of length M consisting of lowercase English letters. A position in the string students I represents a skill and the character in that position represents the proficiency level in that skill. The letter A represents the least proficiency and the letter Z represents the highest proficiency. The authority of Hacker Rank University has decided to send two students in a competition who are strangely compatible. Two students are strangely compatible if their profiles differ in the proficiency level of exactly one skill. Your task is to determine the number of ways to choose two students for the competition such that they are strangely compatible. And the constraints for this problem are that the number of students n and uh, m, the letter, the number of letters in each of the uh, students' profiles will be between uh, 1 and 10 to the 5, and the product of these two values will be between 1 and 10 to the 6. So let's take a look at the example that HackerRank provides us with. So here's the example. Uh, the first number, 3, represents n, the number of students. The second number, 3, represents m, the number of skills in each of the students' profiles. And then we have n lines uh, with 3 or n strings, each of them having m characters. Uh, so we have abc, abd, and bbd. And the problem statement is a little bit confusing, but it's pretty easy to understand. What they're basically asking is they want you to find the number of pairs of strings that only differ by one character, ultimately. So it's a pretty actually simple uh, problem statement that they made uh, a lot more harder to understand by just complicating it with a story. Um, and Hacker Rank kindly provides us with an explanation for why the answer is 2, but it's pretty easy to see that the first and second string only differ by the last character, C in the first string and D in the second string, but all the other characters are the same. And the second and the third string uh, only differ by the first character, which is an A in the second one and a B in the third one. Uh, the pair uh, of string one and string three, uh, they only have one character in common and they differ by two, um, the first and the last. So we only end up with two pairs of students or two pairs of strings that differ by one character. Um, so it's a pretty uh, easy problem statement. How do we go about solving it given the constraints of this problem? So let's zoom in on our example and let's keep the constraints up in our top uh, right hand corner just so we have them handy. And the first thing that I thought was, okay, well, what's the time complexity going to be if we were to just brute force this? Um, so the first thing we need to do is to create a function is strange, uh, or we could call it something, uh, our, you know, the two strings different by one. And this is going to have a linear time complexity uh, with respect to m, the number of characters in each string. Um, and then we would need to perform this on every single pair of strings or students, and that would be a quadratic uh, time complexity uh, with respect to n. So if we were to co combine these two, we'd ultimately end up with a brute force solution that had big O of m times n squared. Um, and given these constraints, we know that that is going to uh, exceed the time limit due to the fact that we know we only have roughly 10 to the 8 operations. And if you know, if we were to split this by 2, so that would be 10 to the 3 for each n and m, we'd end up with 10 to the 9, because um, it's just basically 10 to the 3 uh, cubed. Um, but I thought, okay, is there any small optimizations we could make to this um, algorithm that would make it a little bit faster? And I figured that we could add basically a frequency array for every single student or string, which is just going to be a vector or an array or a list uh, dimensioned by the 26 characters in the lowercase alphabet. And then we could create an extra function called maybe strange that would be, we would be able to compute in constant time. And what we would do basically then is inside our quadratic n squared for loop, before we performed our is strange function to check with uh, whether two of the strings are only different by one character, we could perform this maybe strange function, which would only check um, if the differences of the sort of character counts differ by uh, more than one. So we can basically avoid some of the calls to is strange. And I figured that for some of the uh, cases, we would end up with a passing solution. 
So I went ahead and implemented this. I'll quickly show you the code for that, um, but it's not going to end up being a full solution, but it's, it's useful just to think about um, the thought process. And this is as far as I got in this problem, basically. Um, so here's the main function. Uh, we have our vector string students that we're passing in. We're declaring n to be the size of the students. And uh, this vector of vectors is going to be our vector of basically frequency arrays. So dimension, the inner vector is dimension by 26. We're just looping through um, each of our students. And then for each of the characters in our student strings, we're doing a post increment on the character uh, index or the index that maps the corresponding character. And so once we do that, we have our nested for loop, and then we make our call to maybe strange, which is going to occur in constant time. And then if that passes, we will call our is strange, which will take uh, linear in M, the number of characters in our string. Um, and if we quickly look at maybe strange and is strange, we'll see that basically maybe strange is just looping through um, the data structure T here that's templated is our frequency array. And so we're looping through each of the characters. This is going to be dimension by 26. And we're just adding to the difference, the difference between the counts of the, the current character. And so if at any point that difference exceeds two, we can return false. Um, and uh, if at the end the difference is two, that means that we have a mismatch in two characters. So if um, for our first example, we had A, B, C, and A, B, D. Uh, for our two uh, frequency arrays that we we're comparing, uh, for the first one, C would have a count of one, and uh, for the second one, D would have a count of one. So we would end up with a difference of two. And then for the is strange, it's pretty straightforward, just looping through both of the strings and checking each time is the characters uh, not equal to each other. If so, uh, increment our diff, which is a local variable that we're just keeping track of the number of characters that are different. If at any time it exceeds one, we know that um, these aren't a strange pair of strings. And if at the end uh, the difference is equal to one, then we know we have strange one. Um, but unfortunately, this will only get you 25% of the mark. So it was a 50-point question, so that got you 12.5. Uh, points, which isn't bad, but it's not a full solution. So then I went back to the drawing board. I didn't end up actually coming up with anything, but um, after sort of doing some research, after the contest was over, uh, I figured out what the correct solution was. So I actually thought of this solution, but due to the fact that my first solution timed out, I figured due to this had the same time complexity in my head, so this would also time out, but apparently uh, it didn't. And uh, let's get into that. So the, the correct solution to solve this involves hashing. So the idea is for each one of your n strings, you want to create m new strings by one by one replacing each of the characters in the string with just any random um, character that doesn't exist in the lowercase alphabet. So uh, in this example, I'm just using the question mark, but you can see here that the potential three um, strings that we can generate by changing one of the characters in each of these strings are shown below. So uh, for our first string, ABC, we can replace the first, the second, and the third characters by sort of any random character. And uh, we would end up with some, some sort of string that looks like this if you treat the question mark as a wild card. And if we do that for every single one of our n strings, we end up with n time, times m strings. And we can then basically compare all of these wild carded uh, strings to see if we have any matches. And if we do that, we'll see the following, that we have uh, two pairs, a, b, question mark, and question mark, b, d, which basically corresponds to our answer. Um, so the trick here is basically you can um, group all of these uh, similar or equal wild carded strings and use those counts to generate the number of pairs. So if we try to reason about the time complexity of an algorithm like this, we are going to be um, looping through each of our n strings or n students, and then for each character, creating a new string, which depending on your language, you can do either in constant time or linear time, but in C++, um, swapping out a character for a different character, you can do in constant time. Uh, so we have basically big O of m times n to create um, these uh, different strings. But if we're storing these in a hash map where uh, the key is going to be your wildcarded string and the value is going to be the number of times we see this wildcarded string, uh, we're basically calling the hash function on a string, which I assumed would be linear in the length of the string, giving us a total time complexity of big O of m squared times n, which is very similar to the time complexity we had before. Previously, it was big O of 
uh, m times n squared. So we just basically swapped the squared to be on top of the m instead of the n. But because um, the total time complexity or the total bounds are bounded by the product, it shouldn't make a difference. Um, so I actually, I never went ahead and implemented this algorithm because I figured if the first one failed, this one would fail as well. Um, however, it passes. And the second uh, comment on, in the discussion is by a user, Meow. And they actually pointed out that um, it's very easy to construct a test case that will fail the solution provided um, based on uh, the hashing algorithm that's used. Um, and so I went and did a little bit of research. Uh, I went to Stack Overflow. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to read this whole post. I'm not going to go through this, but basically it's talking about what is the time complexity of hashing uh, string. This one, this uh, response is focusing on C++. And it says basically it's not standard defined what the implementation of your hashing algorithm is. So it depends on the compiler and what they implement. And this post was from back in 2015, so who knows what they're doing now. Uh, but it says that Microsoft's um, hashing algorithm is constant with respect to the length of the string, and GCC's is uh, linear with respect to the string. I'm not actually sure if it's correct to say that this is constant because they're saying uh, the stride length is a tenth of the uh, string length, which means um, it's big O of 1, but uh, that technically is still proportional to the length of the string, so it might be linear, just has a lower coefficient, but you drop the coefficient. Anyways, the details don't really matter. The point is here that uh, your time complexity of hashing a string is going to be language dependent and implementation dependent. Um, but don't assume that it's going to be linear. It could potentially be more efficient than that because um, obviously you can come up with a really bad hashing algorithm that's super fast and you know the really good ones are going to take a little bit more time. Uh, but the point is, is this worked and so we can come back here and we just need to make two more points about this solution. So one is that we need to keep track of the duplicates. So if we have strings that are the same, uh, we don't want to be combining these. Um, so we have to subtract those out. And we're going to be calculating the total number of pairs and the duplicates that we need to subtract out um, by using the handshake formula. I sort of call it this. It doesn't really have a proper name. Um, but it is the formula used if you have sort of n people in a room, how many handshakes can occur. Um, you know, the first person goes and shakes everyone else's hand, then the second person goes and shakes everyone else's hand, except for the first person that already shaked hands. And if you go through this and work out the formula, it's n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Uh, so we're going to just plug this into a function called pair count. And once we have this, we can implement our full solution. So let's take a look at that code. So here is our Python solution. It's actually pretty short. Um, we're going to take a look at the strangely compatible function first. It takes in a list of students and uh, m, the number of characters in each uh, string in our students list. And then at the top here, we're declaring two dictionaries, changed and same. Changed will be for the wildcarded strings, and same will be for uh, the number of strings that have the same, uh, or that are the same, or that are equal. And then we have a for loop for each student in s, or in students. Uh, we want to uh, keep track of how many of uh, students with the same uh, value we've already seen. So we just do that by getting the value and adding one to it. If it doesn't exist, we're initializing it to zero plus one, which will be one. And then for each of our strings, uh, we're gonna loop through each of the uh, characters or the indexes in the range M. And we're gonna basically create this new string, which replaces the ith character with a exclamation mark. So I guess in the example I showed you a question mark, but you can use any wildcard character as long as it's not a lowercase letter and it will work. And then we insert this new changed or wildcarded uh, string slash student into our changed dictionary. And at the end, once we've uh, finished this nested for loop, we just uh, return uh, the number of pairs calculated from our changed dictionary minus the number of pairs uh, calculated from our same dictionary multiplied by the number of characters in each of our strings. Because if you think about the fact if you've got sort of three strings, ABC, 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 um, you're going to be creating M wildcarded strings from each uh, string initially. So we need to multiply this by M in order to back out those number of duplicates. And if we take a look at the pair count function, we're basically using that handshake formula, i times i minus 1 divided by 2. We're using the integer division so that we don't end up with a float. And then we're using a generator expression to just say, uh, do this handshake formula for every single uh, value in our uh, dictionary that we pass to it, which we do once for changed and once for same. And then we just sum up all these values. So a pretty concise way of doing that. 
if we move on to our C++ solution, oh wait, yes, let's comment on the time complexity here. So uh, if we assume that the uh, hash of a string has constant time complexity, we end up with big O of n times n squared. Um, the m squared comes from the fact that this operation here where we're creating a new string t uh, is going to be linear for Python because they don't have a simple um, replace a character, the ith character in a string in constant time. So if we move on to our C++ solution, uh, it's a little bit more verbose, but we're doing the exact same thing. Um, taking a look at our strangely compatible function, passing in a vector of string students, and our integer m. And at the top here, declaring our two dictionaries, uh, which in C++ are called hash maps, uh, or unordered maps. And uh, we have changed and same. Make sure to use a long long here so that we don't overflow our result. And for each student in students, we are inserting our student into our same hash map. And then for every letter in our student string, we are saving the initial value of the uh, current letter that we're looking at, uh, C. Replacing that letter, note that we have auto ref here, so we're getting a, a character reference to the current letter that we're looking at. We're replacing this uh, with the exclamation mark, adding this then to our changed hash map, and then setting uh, the letter that we just changed back to its original value. Uh, so there is, this is a little bit more verbose than what we did in Python, but this is going to give us constant time complexity for uh, creating our sort of new changed string or wildcarded string. And so we're going to do this uh, nested for loop, and then very similar to what we did in Python, we finish this, and then we just return pair count of changed minus the pair count of same uh, times m. And if we take a look at pair count in C++, we can make use of uh, the accumulate function which is similar to the sum function in Python. And in our lambda body, we are basically just keeping our running sum in A and then doing our handshake formula um, with the second value in our key value pair. So this is the equivalent of the i times i minus one divided by two. And we only need a single backslash in order to do integer division in C++. And uh, the last thing to talk about here is the time complexity, of course, which will be if we assume that the time complexity of our hashing on a string is constant, big O of n times n. Note that, as I said before, we don't have m squared here because this operation is constant. Uh, so I guess there's a little bit of hand waving around the time complexity in terms of uh, the hashing of a string being implementation defined. Implementation defined. Um, so. Uh, the note here is just don't assume um, that your hashing of your string is inefficient if you have a solution that you think might work, um, but you're concerned that the time complexity of hashing on strings might put you over the time limit. Give it a try anyways, it might still work. And there's one last thing that I want to mention before I end this video, and that was an alternative solution that was posted in the discussion section um, that linked to a sort of question and answer on Stack Exchange, which I'm not going to go through in a lot of detail, but there'll be a link in the description down below. But it, it sounds like a really neat algorithm, and I implemented a simplified version of it that didn't deal with strings of or students strings of length one but basically what you do is you just take your string you cut it in half and then you put the first half as a key in a hash map and then uh, have a vector of the second halves of the string and then basically you perform your is it different by one or is it a strange pair comparison on that bucket or that value attached to the similar keys and then you do that for uh both the sort of first half as the key and then the second half of the string as the uh, val uh, vector of uh, strings and then you do the same in reverse so where you take the second half of the string and use it as the key and then use the first half as the uh, string values that you're going to compare um, and this ends up working as well so this is just uh, you know maybe you don't want to go and implement it but keep this in the back of your mind um, in the future competitions uh, when you need to do something sort of comparing strings this is a really neat way of sort of slicing your string in half and then um, storing them in hash maps and then just performing the uh, is it different by you know n characters on that bucket um, and it also mentions that you can do this recursively so if it's not enough to just slice your string in half you can sort of do a divide and conquer 
As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.